Yo, 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 what is up guys, Nick Nakai here, Let's Drift Media. Thank you for coming back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome on in. So on today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about ASC tips and advice when it comes to taking these ASC paper tests. Um, now a lot of you guys are trying to get them to move up in the ranks wherever you're at, but I just recently achieved my uh, medium heavy truck ASC master status. So now I have that along with my automobile um, ASC master stat status. So double master, super awesome, it's pretty excited. I was so glad I passed those last two tests today because it's pretty nerve wracking when you go in there and pretty draining too, just sit on a computer answering these questions, you start getting in your head and stuff. So just kind of want to make this video to maybe give you guys some tips and advice uh, since this test taking is pretty fresh in my head right now since I actually just took these tests today. So yeah, for well, what that means for me, now that I have my truck master and my auto master, I could start applying to move up in the ranks at my current job to become a lead technician to actually get to do a little bit more hands-on, bigger jobs, a little bit more fun stuff than I'm doing right now. So again, it's all still a seniority since it's union. So I guess gotta put in time or hopefully get a spot where nobody else goes for that has more time for me than me. But we'll see what happens. You never know what the future holds, but at least I have it and don't gotta worry about it. So real quick, just wanna clear up the air. I know ASCs, it says ASC Master Tech, um, said this before, just because you are an ASC Master Tech, Master Truck Tech, does not mean you know everything about trucks or everything about cars and you are just like the biggest badass in the world. Um, but ASCs are very important because they help you move up where you're working at. So depending on what manufacturer you're working for, whether you're in fleet, working at the dealership, or even independent, a lot of these places pay you more for having these ASCs. So yeah, a lot of people like to talk crap on them, saying like, oh my God, you got your ASCs, wow. But when it comes to making more money, usually they come in your favor. So up to you if you wanna get them. Just wanna get that out of the way because uh, a lot of people like to talk crap about it, but really, I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I didn't have at least all my auto ASCs to get to where I'm at, so yeah. I'm actually curious if ASCs mean anything to you guys where you're working at because when I was at Toyota, you needed to have your ASC automobile master status in order to become a Toyota master. At BMW, they didn't care about ASCs really at all, but I did hear from somebody in the Discord that they now require you, or they're gonna start requiring you to be ASC master in order to uh, keep your BMW level one master status or else you lose it. So I'm curious to know where you're working at, if ASCs even really apply to you or if ASCs don't matter because I know a lot of places, they don't really care about ASCs and they don't really give bonuses or raises depending on how many ASCs you have. So just curious uh, from your guys' point of view, um, what they mean to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. So if you don't have any ASCs, really the first tip I would recommend doing is just sign up for all eight of them. I know it sounds crazy, um, but the reason I say this is because once you go to take the test, uh, pass or fail, you're gonna get your little score printout. I'll pull mine up right here. And it'll tell you pretty much the score you got, uh, the score required to, that you needed to pass. So it tells you if you passed or failed, but then it also breaks down the questions you took. So for example, today I took the diesel engine and drivetrain ASCs for the T-Series ASCs. And it breaks it down, uh, you got A, clutch diagnosis, repair, total number of questions, 11. You got transmission diagnosis and repair, total number of questions, 13. Drive shaft, seven questions, and nine questions on drive axle diagnosis and repair. And then it tells you how many answers you got correctly in each of those sections and out of the total. So basically, that's why I say just go for them all. Um, you don't have to take them all in the same week or same day like I did, because it's honestly a little bit draining, like mentally draining to just sit there and each test pretty much takes about an hour. So if you're taking four tests in a day, you're looking at four hours of straight test taking. So it's honestly, it kind of sucks. And I didn't want to do that, but I just really wanted to hurry up and just get master status. So I just sucked it up. But I would recommend signing up for all eight if you're getting the automotive ones at least and maybe just sign up for like two one week, two the next week, two the next week, and two the next week. That way you give yourself time to study for just those two you're taking. And 
like I said, the scoring. Because even if you don't really think you're gonna pass, you might pass. I pass pretty much all of them first try, luckily, because you really don't have to score that high. As you can see, I scored a 30 out of 40. But being able to have that little breakdown is really nice because you can go and take your test and then be like, oh wow, like I did really good on the clutch diagnosis part of the test. I think I got that down pretty good. Maybe I just gotta study more, as you can see for me, for the drive axle diagnosis and repair. And that way you kind of know your strong points and your weak points, and then you're kind of not just studying the whole ASC book, trying to go through it and just memorize the whole book. You kind of just maybe hone in your your knowledge on whatever sec section or area that you didn't test too well in. So that's why I say just take them all, get them out of the way, and at least kind of figure out where you're at. And believe it or not, um, you'll probably pass a couple of them on your first try, honestly. Another tip I have for this is read the question carefully. Um, don't just go straight thinking like, I know the answer. Um, I do that sometimes, I kind of just read halfway and I'm like, oh, I know it, like, like ding, like, it's not a race. You have plenty of time to finish the test. Um, read the question thoroughly, especially there's some questions they throw in there that say all statements are true except, and then you'll go read about whatever subject they're talking about. And you'll go reading down and maybe the first one you read is the alternator's job is to charge the battery. And boom, you select that one. But since you didn't read the question carefully, it said except. So it's gonna give you three answers that are correct statements. And there's gonna be one statement in there that's incorrect. And that's your job to read through it. So definitely just slow it down a little bit and try and read carefully because they will get you. Another tip I have that I feel like is probably the biggest uh, tactic I use when taking these ASC tests is um, the process of elimination. I feel like on pretty much all the tests that I've taken, there's always at least one or two answers in the questions they're giving you that like don't really make any sense at all. Like if you really read the question carefully, you're just like, what the heck? Like, for example, I pulled this one off on uh, asc.practicetestgeeks.com. It says, which of the following indicates a spongy brake pedal on a car with four wheel disc brakes and a longer than normal travel? So already right there, uh, spongy brake, I'm already thinking air in the system because that's the first thing that comes to mind. But the answers they give you, caliper piston seized, parking brake out of adjustment, air in the hydraulic system, a faulty power booster. So caliper piston seized already, you can knock that one out because if a caliper piston was seized, the brake pedal would not feel spongy, it would feel hard. Parking brake out of adjustment isn't gonna have anything to do with the foot brake. Uh, at least on a four wheel disc brake type setup. Air in the hydraulic system is clearly gonna be the answer, but even if you weren't sure, just knowing those other two are out of the game, you can narrow it down to air in the hydraulic system or a faulty power booster. And I use this tactic a lot because a lot of the questions they ask me or ask will ask on these tests, I'm not really too sure, like 100%. Um, Especially when I was doing the diesel ones, you guys know I have no diesel experience, so all the knowledge pretty much I have is from what I've learned before in school about automobiles and from what I've learned at work about working on heavy trucks. So a lot of the questions I was able to, at least I feel like, knock out too and be like, nah, this one just, it sounds weird or it just doesn't make sense to me. And by doing that, then you just leave yourself with one or two remaining choices. And I feel like narrowing it down to that almost gives you a 50, or does give you a pretty much a 50-50 shot if you eliminated the obviously wrong answers. And really, really think that helps when it comes to getting more questions correctly on these tests. Another tip I have is when it comes to the technician A and B questions, those ones get a little tricky because yes, it's one question, but it actually ends up being two questions a lot of the time because technician A can give one statement and technician B could give another statement and you're either choosing only tech A is right, only tech B is right, both are right, or neither are right. So those you really have to read and just think of it as two questions. I feel like that really helps because a lot of the times I'll see that they'll put like a sentence or a statement and then like relating to whatever, the braking system. 
And technician A might say a statement that is true about the braking system. And technician B, sometimes they throw in a statement that doesn't have to do with the braking system or whatever tech A was talking about. But they're both correct statements. So you really just have to read each individual statement as its own question and go from there. There are also a lot of uh, questions which will have like a picture of something. Maybe has like a guy measuring a uh, run out on a rear diff ring gear. I actually had a question like that in the drivetrain ASC test today. And the freaking pictures guys, ASC needs to like step it up because it looks like someone drew that with like a freaking old, old ass pen, marker, whatever that doesn't really give you much detail and sometimes I feel like it's hard to tell what the heck that picture even is. So on that question I was talking about, they pretty much had like the ring gear of a, on the rear differential and it showed kind of like it, I'm, or it was a dial indicator, but you couldn't tell where they had the, the measuring needle mounted. So like it honestly, the answer was run out. I'm like 99% sure I got that one right. But I kind of just, I couldn't really go off that picture to know which answer was right. Really what I did in that scenario was just eliminate the ones that made no sense at all. Because one of the answers was like measuring uh, gear backlash. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense because whatever tool it's on the back of the, the, the ring gear, not on the teeth side. And another answer was like measuring pinion preload. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense because why would they be at the back of the open end of the diff? But I pretty much had to just eliminate the answers that I knew for sure that that picture they couldn't be doing. But really just looking at that picture, like you would not think that they were measuring gear runout because one, you couldn't even really tell exactly what tool they were using in the drawing they give you. And two, you can't even tell how the tool is set up. You kind of just see like a little blob behind the diff. And I was like, dude, what the heck? So those picture ones like really suck. I hope they change that really soon. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about if you've taken any. Another tip I have is when you're taking these tests, um, you don't have to answer it in order to move on to the next one. So if you're unsure about one, you can flag that question and then you can just go back to it later. Um, I feel like that really helps because sometimes they'll give you a statement or a question and the terminology or wording they'll use Maybe you don't know what that word means, or maybe they're just using a different word than the word you're used to knowing. So, but later on going through the test, you might run into another question that brings up that same word or phrasing, and it kind of clarifies it through the new question they're asking you. And just having that new information, it kind of helps fill in the blanks when you go back to that old question, because I actually had one on the, Diesel particulate filter, it showed one and it was just like all black and it looked like plugged up. And then the, the answers I narrowed it down to was excessive oil going into the exhaust system or face plugging. But I didn't know it was face plugging. I was like, what the heck is face plugging? And then I did, I just answered it, I kind of guessed. And then I went down a few questions and there was another question and it brought up face plugging and it kind of explained face plugging, but in its own way to ask you a different question. So I was like, oh, face plugging. Like, I guess that's a thing then for these, uh, these filters. So I went back and I was like, oh yeah, it's probably face plugging. And I'm pretty sure I got that one right. But I mean, I really don't know which questions I got right or wrong, but in my head, I feel like I got it right at least. But being able to flag those questions and if you're unsure of something, just keep going down the test and you never know that terminology might come back into another question and help clarify the first question that you were confused on. And last and final tip I would say is just go in there confident and when you select your answers, go with your gut, do what your heart tells you or really what your brain tells you, what you think is the most correct answer. But one thing that I do is I kind of, once I submit my answer, I don't really go back. The only ones I'll go back to is if I was like really, really unsure and I just wanna go back. But I feel like going back through like each question, it kind of like makes you second guess yourself. And I've just never been one to do that. And I feel like I've had at least a pretty good success rate when it comes to these tests. But I feel like whatever answer you go with, just go with it. Like you picked it for a reason and just trust it. If that makes sense at all. At least that's what I do. So, 
think that pretty much sums up my ASC testing tips and advice. If you guys have any tips, uh, please, I would love to see them down in the comments. It will also help out the viewers trying to pass these ASC tests. Maybe you guys have another tactic or way of attacking these tests that I didn't mention in this video and I don't even know about. So I'd love to hear from you guys, but that's all I got for you guys. So hope you guys have a great weekend. We're back on the weekly uploads. We just hit 39,000 subscribers. Fuck yeah. Catch you guys later. Peace!